Well, it's the vehicle of choice for Hollywood activists like Leonardo DiCaprio and President Obama says he'd like to see a million of them on America's roads by 2015. But my guest this week says that those so-called green electric cars have a dirty little secret. Bjorn Lomborg is director of the Copenhagen Consensus Center in Washington and author of Cool It, the Skeptical Environmentalist Guide to Global Warming. So welcome back to the program. Thanks, Paul. So when you say that green cars may not be all that green, the electric cars, what do you mean? Well, fundamentally, everybody thinks, oh, an electric car has zero emissions. That's what we're being sold. And yes, that's true on the road, but there's two important parts. First, when you produce the electric car, it actually uses a lot of electricity and a lot of energy, especially to produce the battery. So once it's rolled off the, uh, the factory floor, it's like you've already driven it 80,000 miles. So you've already put out a lot of CO2 just simply by buying And the is car. the production, is, is there no. more green, uh, more, more carbon emissions produced it's, for the it's battery than, 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 it's, than it produced for regular cars? Yes. It produces more than twice the amount of CO2 producing the uh, uh, electric car than a regular gas car. So it's clearly behind already when it rolls off the factory. But also, while you're driving, you still recharge it with right. electricity. And there, of course, you put out less CO2 than a gasoline car, but you have a lot to catch up. So unless you drive it for a very long while, at least 60 or 70,000 miles, you don't actually get ahead. And because they have very, very short ranges, that's not an impossible outcome. And you're plugged in, you have to plug into the electric grid, yes. essentially, and the electric yeah. power is produced by, right now, substantially things like coal and natural gas, which are carbon-emitting fuels. But what yes. if, what if we move to an electric power grid that was fundamentally uh, uh, powered by wind and solar? That's what a lot of Californians that are trying to get to. Then wouldn't electric cars pay off? Then electric cars would be much better. They would pay themselves back much quicker. So yes, the electric car is a good idea in the long run. Uh, but the, uh, define the, the long well, run. The, we don't know. There's two things you need to do. One is you need to get to a, uh, an electricity grid that's much greener than it is today. And that's not going to happen in the next couple of decades. Next and the couple second, of decades? Well, okay. well uh, certainly, if you, if you look at the International Energy Agency, they estimate that right now the world gets about 0.8% of its energy from wind and 0.1% from solar. Wow. But if you look to 2035 when we think, oh, we're all going to be green. No, the answer is 2.4% wind and 0.6% solar. So we're still going to be majorly fossil fuel based even in 22 years. So the reality is we've got to realize this is, if anything, a tiny addition to tr uh, trying to tackle global warming. So batteries also have to be replaced, much as they are in your yep. cell phones, for example. So what, what's the environmental impact of getting rid of, what would it be, of all those electric batteries? Some, they have to go somewhere. Well, they've actually looked at that, and the energy impact is not very big of the disposal of the, of the battery, because obviously there's some concerns that you need to dispose of them correctly. But the real problem is, if you drive very, very far in your electric car, you have to uh, change your battery. Right. And then, of course, you put on a whole new load of CO2 emissions. Every time and, you reload yes, the battery. Or, or if you <clears> drive <throat> around in these huge cars that have lots of lots of batteries and therefore a very extended range, then you will never get ahead with the CO2 emissions. So the reality is green cars are not very green. Even if you take them at the optimum value, if you make all the nice assumptions for them, they will probably end up emitting about 8.7 tons less CO2 over their, their lifetime. Now, if you take the damage estimate of that, that means about you avoid about $44 of carbon damage in their lifetime. And that's, and that's minuscule on the grand uh, scale. Well, we're paying them $7,500 in subsidies, and people are also paying a lot more beyond that. Uh, for the privilege of Each driving a consumer car. gets a uh, tax credit that $7,500 if I go out and buy a, an electric car. The government's actually paying me something yes. to buy it. It's also subsidizing the producers of those cars with, uh, with subsidies. Uh, is that a good deal for taxpayers? No. Fundamentally, you're paying $7,500 or more for a benefit that's environmentally worth about $44. <laughs> not a good deal. <laughs> that's not a good deal. What if you, if, if you really care about climate change and you want to have an impact, what should you drive? 
doesn't matter. <laughs> well, I mean, you should definitely drive a smaller car. You should definitely be focused on, do I really need, should I take public transport? There's a lot of ways that you can do this. But what you really need to recognize is, this is not about you or me or anyone else in particular what we try to do. It's about how we organize our societies. And of course, especially, how do we get the Chinese to drive in the next 20 or 40 years? And that's about technology. So I'm all for an electric car in the long run. But it's an electric car that's going to be much cheaper, much more efficient. We need much better batteries. So by all means, let's focus on research on batteries. But please, let's not spend lots of money doing very, very little good. All right, Bjorn Lomberg, thanks very much for being here. We have to take one more break. When we come back, hits and misses of the week. Olympus is falling. I repeat, Olympus is falling. Half the White House is just gone. Get down! has fallen rated R. Because every bride is unique. Because every